Since I only have VCAR Pro instead of Aspire, and I can't really create my own 3D models, I'm always looking for something interesting to use with my rotary axis on my Gatton CNC. And I found some uh, interesting models of chess pieces over there on Thingiverse. And I know what you're probably thinking, hey Dave, you know, Thingiverse is, you know, isn't that only for like 3D printing? And I think, I think you're probably right. I think most of the stuff is kind of designed around the uh, 3D printing community. But if you take those models and do a little bit of creative uh, programming in VCAR Pro, you can actually get them to run on a rotary axis on a CNC. There are some limitations, of course, because if you get the material too thin, it will break while it's trying to, uh, to cut it. So you have to uh, kind of beat things up and then maybe do some hand work uh, after the fact. But if you want to see uh, how the one I did turned out, stick around. When setting up my rotary axis on my GAT and CNC, you see I've got some blind holes where I just have some router bits stuck down in those holes and I kind of pull the rotary axis up against that and then clamp it down and that way it'll stay nice and secure and the x-axis is in line with the rotary axis. The next thing I have to do is get my uh, x-axis lined up uh, centered over the rotary axis so I load in my regular uh, Gatton CNC router machine profile and jog the machine up and if you look close, I don't know if you can see it because the dust collection hose is kind of in the way there. But uh, I have a uh, very small V-bit in the spindle and that way I can just uh, line that up with the point on the, uh, the tail stock there, the live center. So that, uh, that works pretty good. And you do want to take your time and really get that as close as you can because that's going to really depend on how accurate um, your x-axis is traveling across your uh, the center line of your rotary axis. And here is the blank I'm going to use for this project. It's just a couple of two befores that have been glued together with the corners kind of uh, cut off so that they're uh, this whole thing is about eight inches long by three inches and you can see I like to glue on a three inch donut that has a inch and a half hole in the center of it and it makes it real easy to uh, to chuck it up there uh, with the head stop. I've used my center finder to mark the other end where I can just make sure that I get that lined up uh, with the center and just kind of bump that uh, that tail stock in there and, and lock it in. Here I'm just using a rounding tool path to take the whole 8 inch length down from to make it from a square to a round. So it'll be approximately 3 inches um, or well, I guess maybe just under that 2.9 or something uh, inches diameter once it uh, goes back and forth and rounds that all off. But it make, I have a quarter inch end mill on there and it makes pretty quick work of uh, running the uh, squared around program. Here I'm using a uh, the same quarter inch end mill for the uh, roughing tool path and uh, I'm trying to remember I think I have it set for about uh, an eighth inch pass at a time but uh, again it makes pretty quick work of uh, you know roughing it out getting it ready for the finishing pass.
This is the start of the finishing pass and I can see right away as you look and you see how far it goes to the right that I can tell I was looking at the um, DRO on Mach 3 and I thought wait a minute it's showing the Z at zero when it goes through there so it's eventually going to cut that last little uh, zero plane tab uh, cut it completely away and it's going to fail so I stopped the uh, machine and went back in the house and reprogrammed it and now you can see that it doesn't go as far to the right it's only going to the top of what will end up being the cross on the top of the chest piece the whole time this is running I was a little concerned that even though I had caught that mistake near the beginning of this finishing pass is that it would still maybe uh, with the pressure of being cut down there on the end end up breaking or you know moving the least little bit down there where the tailstock is and causing the whole part to be failure number three but uh, I just kept my fingers crossed and it seemed to work out pretty good Okay, something I wanted to mention before I pull this out of here is if you were watching closely when I first started the roughing pass, it was coming all the way over here and I was watching the uh, DRO on Mach 3 and it was going down to zero right here. So I thought, oh nuts, it's going to cut this, end up cutting this away and this will break loose again. And by the way, this is like the third time I've tried this. Uh, because I kept screwing up and not putting enough meat here I ended up using a, a zero plane uh, and then putting some more meat here just kind of scooting it back I will be cutting this off you can see how I used a, a vector box to uh, make sure it wouldn't come all the way down and start trying to cut the, the piece all the way out so it'll be getting cut off probably somewhere around there and then I'll have to come back and cut this off and do some hand sanding to uh, to fix the cross that goes on top of this king but I was real worried when I saw that it was going to cut that uh, all the way through I stopped it went back in the house and uh, resized that vector to have it come to just about the end of here so it probably gives me a little more uh, cleanup work I have to do but you just when you're trying to run these things you can't get them too you know try to get them too thin because if they break you've just lost all that time and like I said I know because this is the third one that I've done the first one uh, broke off right at the end of the roughing pass the uh, second one broke uh, uh, or came out of the uh, tailstock here about 29 seconds into the final finishing pass so uh, yeah, better better to leave yourself a little sanding work there. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out before I pull this out of here. Okay, so here is a picture of it as it came off the machine. And over here is a picture of it after I had trimmed the base down and cut the top off and tried to fashion the cross uh, that goes on top of the, the king piece. And here is the final work. You can see I've trim the base down using my bandsaw. Uh, if I do many more of these, I'm probably going to have to make some kind of fixture because it's hard to keep this uh, where it will be nice and flat and even. So I had, after I cut it, it was a little crooked and I had to put it on the 
uh, my sander, kind of flatten it back out. And I just used a handsaw to cut off the zero plane tab that was uh, sticking out here. And then this is real thin. It would probably be easy to break it off if you're not careful. But I used my Dremel tool with a little sanding attachment to try to uh, try to fashion the cross. So I think my Dremel skills could use a little work. But other than that, it came out okay as a as a test piece, and might be fun to make uh, to make some more of these. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Uh, watching the, the thing go back and forth, I know sometimes that's a little boring, that's why I kind of sped it up. Uh, but I do like watching a rotary axis and watching the 3D thing kind of come to life out of a piece of uh, what just starts off as a square or a round piece of stock. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please think about subscribing and that way you'll get a notification if you hit that little bell and you'll know every time I upload a new video. I'm uh, just kind of getting back. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I had a heart attack last month and was uh, kind of out of pocket there for a while, but uh, we're healing up fast, we're healing up good, and I'm looking forward to getting back out here in the shop and putting out some more videos. So, got, uh, you know, of course the CNC stuff, and I've got the little mini camper that's going to start kicking back in too here in just a little bit. So if you enjoy any of that kind of stuff, think about subscribing. But until then, uh, thank you very much for watching.